I want to welcome you here to our Wednesday night devotional. And uh, Cody and I just wanted to take some time and discuss with you the verses that we looked at on Sunday because they're such classic verses out of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, as you can see on the screen behind me. And if you have your Bible, take it and, and look at them as well because I know they're going to want to be verses that you underline and possibly even memorize because they're that good. So I want us to open us with prayer. Father, thank you for our time tonight in your word, and I pray, God, that you would teach us even more about what it means to trust you and, Lord, your word here, and we just ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Cody, uh, what do you think of when you think of these two verses in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Well, I think in a lot of ways, it's a challenge because I know personally, like it tells us to trust the Lord with all of our heart and to not lean on our own understanding. And I'm like, that's exactly what I do all the time. I, whenever someone, whenever I face something, my natural reaction is like, well, let me try to solve it myself. Let me use my own stories, my own brain power. I can handle it. And then I realize, well, actually I can't. Yeah, exactly. I think that's one of the things that, as I studied for it, I realized how easy it is for us just to lean on our own understanding. And uh, as I mentioned Sunday, it's just, it's easy to say trust in the Lord, mm -hmm. but it's certainly another thing to do it. Yeah. And much easier to trust our own understanding, our own background and things like that. So how do you think we can catch ourselves when we're trusting something else? I mean, what are some things that you found that happens when all of a sudden you realize what are some ways God reminds you to trust him and not something else? Well, I think just that pattern of habit, because my natural inclination is to, to trust in myself, just he reminds me, remember the last time you did this, how it didn't work out? Right. And it just reminds me that instead of saving God for last, he reminds me, no, 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 why don't you actually do what you know to work? Reminds, he reminds me of his faithfulness mm. and how... He's been faithful in the past, and he's helped me so far. I can trust him and just go to him first. Mm -hmm. Kind of reminds me of Henry Blackaby when he talked about spiritual markers, mm -hmm. and you, you've probably heard me speak about that before, but spiritual markers are those times where you've seen God work. Yeah. So when I've been able to trust God with all my heart and lean not on my understanding, he showed himself to be, you know, be faithful in that. So those are things that help me. It's like just continue to remind myself, hey, I, God's proved himself in the past that I can trust him, so let me do it. I think another thing is just getting in God's word on a yeah. daily basis. Um, God's always reminding us in his word he can be trusted, mm -hmm. that he is faithful. And um, I think another thing is just when people say, hey, I'm praying for you, or when people share what God's doing in their life, it's a way that the Holy Spirit uses to say, hey, he can be trusted. Oh, I agree. One of my favorite things to do is to read the testimonies of people who have been used by God to do great and wonderful things. And mm -hmm. I think God gives us those examples for a reason. Yeah. Well, let's uh, talk about the context of Proverbs 3, which we, we talked a little bit about. Um, what do you, what, should, what is it like for you when you read in Proverbs? Because it's, it's different literature mm -hmm. in the Bible than, than other parts. Well, I think in a lot of ways, uh, it's general wisdom and, you know, it's practical wisdom that when you look at life, obviously they're not 100% guaranteed promises, but based on life and how God has created the world, these are statements that for the majority of reality, they're going to hold true. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with that. These are true sayings. And they're just general. We can go to them and understand them. And there's a lot of them. And so you can read the book of Proverbs a chapter at a time. You can read a few verses as we took out a few. Um, I've read where great men and women of faith through the years have. I know Billy Graham, I think, read a, pro, a proverb every day. Mm -hmm. So every month he read through the book of Proverbs. And just soaking in that wisdom from God yeah. uh, does a lot for us. Mm -hmm. And um well, in the context, Solomon is writing to his son. And so a father writing to his son, wanting what's best for him, giving him this wisdom literature. Um, I kind of shared the story about how my dad pointed me to the Bible at a time I needed it. But, you know, not everybody has that kind of relationship growing up. I mean, what do we say to people who maybe didn't have parents who pointed them to God's word? And so maybe that's not there for them. What would you say to that? 
Well, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be parents. I, I know for myself personally, God has used many different people in many different walks of life to point me towards God and to his word. And even if you might not have a, you know, a godly father, that doesn't necessarily mean that's, that's a problem because mm -hmm. God promises to be our good father. And so we can rely on him. And so we might not have the earthly father to give us his wisdom, mm -hmm. but we have a heavenly father who wants us to seek his wisdom. I absolutely agree. I think that was the great truth that stood out to me as well is that God is now our father through Jesus. And so in a sense, we go to God's word and particularly look at Proverbs. It's as if God is you know, speaking to us as his children and saying, hey, here's where real wisdom is. And um, so I think that's important. So another thing I'll just share is in some of the last few sermons, I've just simply used a basic Bible study method of taking a look at the context, mm -hmm. taking a look at, at what it says, and then do the application. Because right. we have a real real tendency to jump straight to application, oh, don't yeah. we? Mm -hmm. So we don't understand the context. Sometimes it's hard for us to... Uh, to, to really get what the Bible is saying. So I, I, would, I would encourage you to do that when you do your own study of the Bible. Well, in, in the basic instruction here, it says, Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. What, what does that mean? I mean, because most of the time we tend to think, well, that's church, right? Mm -hmm. But it goes further than that. Yeah. I think it's seeing God in the little things of life, you know, mm -hmm. like I wake up in the morning, well, that's a blessing from God because mm -hmm. he is the giver of my time. Mm -hmm. I have a job. God has blessed me with that and the ability to work. God has given me relationships, a family. He's given me the ability to read, to write. He's given me food and drink and water, a home to live in. Mm -hmm. All these small things that many times, if we're honest, we take for granted, mm -hmm. but God blesses us and we acknowledge him as he is the giver of all good things. Sure. And isn't it easy sometimes, though, for us to have a way of life, a certain part of our life that we don't necessarily trust the Lord in mm -hmm. or follow his way? Um, like maybe maybe at home we're doing fine at church, but then, then at work we've got some people that aren't Christians, and so it's really easy just to follow along with the crowd, isn't it? Oh, it's very easy. Like I've I've worked, you know, jobs in the secular world, and it's very easy to join along with them, to want to be liked, to mm -hmm. to to not have them look down on you, and it's so easy to join in with their jokes and mm -hmm. the inside things of you know, snide remarks and looking down on people. It's yeah. so easy to fall into that. Yeah, and, and, the, and the world just kind of sucks you in that way. And uh, and we battle the flesh because we want to be liked and approved of, and Satan's right there cheering us on. And uh, certainly our, our friends who are not believers, they don't know any difference, right? No. And so that's just one way. You know, another way that struck me was, and, and I really didn't bring this up this past week, but right after verses 5 and 6 there, it, in verses 9 and 10, it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. You know, one of the things I thought about was how easy it is to honor God in all of our ways except our finances. Mm. And we're all being tested right now with that, right? Oh, yeah. Certainly wondering what the future is going to hold and are we going to have a job and things like that. And yet the Lord says, Honor me with your wealth. You know, it doesn't doesn't matter how much wealth, right? Mm -hmm. But that's one of those ways to acknowledge him. And, and that's, again, easier said than done. Yeah. And so, um, well, he says, and he will make straight your paths. Some versions say, and he will direct your paths. So mm -hmm. what do you think the difference is there in that translation? Or is there a difference, you think, between direct your paths and make straight your paths? I think in a lot of ways they're similar, but in other ways there's a little bit of nuance, whereas whereas he will make it almost gives an idea of like a little bit of a passive thing, like, you know, he's like he's the one doing it. Mm -hmm. But with directing it, it's like he's inviting us along with him. Mm -hmm. Like we're going down this journey and he's the one actively making sure that our path is going the right way that we need to go. Yeah. I think both give a lot there. Mm -hmm. And and again, that reminds us in our Understand of the Bible that we are reading it in English, mm -hmm. but sometimes behind in the original language, there's a lot of there's nuances, little, yeah. yeah, that we miss. 
Um, and, and that's why I think God's given some the gift of teaching and things like that. And so we, we benefit from each other's gifts. But, you know, God directing our paths or whether he's making them straight. You know, um, I heard a friend once say that, that God can draw straight lines with crooked sticks. And that's, <laughs> that's we're the crooked sticks. Yeah. And yet he can do that and he can make straight our paths. And sometimes our paths seem so windy and curvy and life throws a lot of curveballs at us. And we're wondering, whoa, and yet knowing that if I trust the Lord, he can make straight my path means I, I can have confidence that he is going to guide me through this life on, mm -hmm. on the journey that I'm on. Well, we talked, to, let's talk a little more about application yep. real quick. We got a couple of more minutes. Um, one of the things I brought up Sunday was know who you're trusting. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've already alluded to it's easier to trust in other things, but I guess one of the things that I brought out was if we trust anything besides the Lord, it can be an idol. Right. And, you know, when you read the Old Testament, Israel struggled with idolatry tremendously. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, so much so that, that when they get it, went into captivity and came back, we never again read about Israel making idols other than they made an idol of the law. Right. You know, but in modern day times, besides little Buddha statues, what, what are some idols that people struggle with? Obviously, technology is a big one. I think we're seeing more and more people who really rely and base their life upon technology mm -hmm. where, you know, it's it's the culture to say, oh, I just binged an entire season of a show, which <laughs> means you just spent like 12 hours of your day watching right. one show. Uh, we never look up look up from our phone like we're so easy to message someone when we can't have real interaction with someone. Mm -hmm. I think technology is a big one. I think another one is wealth. Like we base a lot of our pride and our value on how much money we have and our possessions. Mm, that's true. I would agree with both of those. I think te you know technology is not bad in and of itself because we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing right now without technology. Right. However, it can consume us. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, it, it becomes number one. Um, and so I think that can be a real idol. Uh, and, and, and I heard one time, I think it was Tim Keller said, if a good thing becomes a God thing, it becomes a bad thing. So idols of good things can happen like technology, like wealth, uh, family, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we can put family above God. Um, I think all of those can be idols. Now, of course, there's also sinful things that become idols. Mm -hmm. Um, if any, you know, any addiction really is a classic sense of an idol, right? And, you know, we might need to be rescued from that. We might need intervention. We might need help with that. And, and if you're struggling with that today, I want to encourage you, give me or Cody a call and we'll do what we can or point you in the right direction to help you with that. But I know God can set you free from that, uh, particularly if we trust him with all of our heart. And so, so those are just some of the idols. And I think it's a very important that people recognize we can still struggle with idols today. Another thing in application I mentioned was that half-hearted obedience is disobedience. Let's kind of expand on that. Um, you ever found yourself at a time where you thought, eh, I'm kind of half-hearted, but that's good enough. God will understand. Yeah, like when I was in college, I was getting my degree in Christian studies, planning to be in the ministry, and yet I found myself staying up late on Saturdays and just not wanting to get out of bed on Sunday. And so... For my first year of college, I never went to church. Mm. And so here I am preparing to be in ministry, and yet I'm not actually being in ministry. Yeah. And so it's just that contradiction that eventually the Lord gripped my heart and said, no, 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 make make the church a priority. Yeah, absolutely. And this can go, I think, across our lives in many ways. Um, sometimes we think, well, we're obedient in several areas, but... We give way to gossip and we think, ah, oh, it's just a little bit, or there's, you know, it's just a little white lie. It's just that, you know, and we just slowly creep and give ourselves a leash on sin as if it's okay. And, but to trust the Lord with all our heart and lean not on understanding is to say, you know what, in all areas of my life, trusting God and obedience is important. So, and I gave the example, um, of Abraham, you know, and putting that on the altar. That's a tough story, isn't it? 
Oh, it's so tough because you read a story of Abraham and it goes on for chapter after chapter. And this is a man who left everything to follow God. Like he spent the vast majority of his life believing that God would eventually keep his word. Mm -hmm. And then it finally happened. And as mm -hmm. soon as he had his kid, God says, I know you love him. This is the son that you love. Now go sacrifice him. Mm -hmm. And that's a challenge. Oh, absolutely. And something so precious to him. Mm -hmm. And yet I think part of our Christian journey is getting to the point that we can trust God with even the most precious things in our life. Um, and I think we, I would say, suffer from the illusion. Like I'll just take parenting, for example, when my kids were small, sometimes it was hard to say, okay, God, they're yours, because I thought somehow I could be a better dad than God, yeah. you know, or I could control circumstances as if, you know, I could even say anything to the wind and waves and they would do something. And yet, again, something precious laying it on the altar is part of this whole trusting God with all of our heart. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, I think the Holy Spirit is pointing out on a regular basis things that we keep trying to take back mm -hmm. and things that we want to take back control of. Or, and God's saying, mm, let's put that back on the altar because really that's his. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, everything we have is his. And so... Well, one last thing before we go is um, we touched about an eternal perspective. Um, I mean, you're still a young guy. I mean, you're 28, 28, right? 28. Okay, so, you know, when you think of an eternal perspective, what does that, what does that mean to you? I think in a lot of ways it reminds me that regardless of, of what happens in this life, in good times and bad, that this is not the end, that I have an eternity to look forward to. And so what I do here matters in eternity. And so I need to live my life with that perspective where what I do matters here. And I've been diving into a lot of books about heaven and eternity. And a lot of them are speaking on the fact that, yes, you might be in heaven, but how you are faithful on this side of eternity will impact your level of being able to worship and experience God on that side and mm -hmm. I don't want to deprive myself of experiencing God any bit I mm -hmm. want the full experience sure I, I think when I was younger I dealt with eternal things almost with uh, well there was a I'll say this I, I had a deacon at a church that told me one time um, I'm ready but I'm not flagging down the train <laughs> so I think right. I, particularly yeah. when you're younger you're thinking but I want to get married and I want yeah. to have kids and I want this and that. Like, Lord, I'm, I can't wait to be with you, but just not just right not now. Right now. <laughs> so, and we laugh about it, but it's true. I yeah. mean, it's something that we wrestle with. Mm -hmm. Part of it is this is the life, only life we know of. And I think that's part of it. And it's hard for us to imagine what heaven's going to be like. We just know it's going to be much better. So much so that we really, no eyes see, no ears heard in one sense, and yet the scripture constantly reminds us that Jesus came to set us free from the fear of death. And during this crisis, man, there's been a lot of fear of death. There's been death. It's, it, it, and, and I would say this, death has been here all along. This has just kind of bubbled up to the surface in a way that we haven't seen in our lifetime. So that every day we're looking at numbers and going, oh, how many people died? Whereas normally we watch the news and there's murders and accidents. So death's around, yeah. uh, but it's just brought it to the forefront. And I think for the Christian, that eternal perspective that this isn't all there is, that our best life now is the hashtag that goes around. Really, this will not be the best life. Yeah. Our life with the Lord eternally is going to be the best life. Mm -hmm. So brother, I've enjoyed our discussion. I hope you have too at home, and I hope it's encouraged you to dive into these verses some more. Again, like I said at the beginning, memorize these, go to them often because they're just, they're great uh, truths from God's word. So I want to pray for you, and uh, as we get ready to go, I'm going to ask Cody to pray. Sure. Join us in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful that you are a faithful God. That we know that as we go through life's journeys, through the ups, the downs, the mountains, and the valleys, Lord, we know that you walk right along the side of those. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we hold fast to this promise that you will indeed make our path straight, Lord. So Lord, I pray that knowing that, that we would lay what we need to on the altar. Mm -hmm. 
that we would trust you in all of our ways, that we would not rely on our strengths and our minds and our abilities, but that we would see that everything of everything that we are, everything that we have is a gift from you. So let's give it back to you because you can do far more than we ever could. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I pray you have a blessed week and we'll see you Sunday. God bless.